Hey there guys, I'm Zach and this is Zach's Editing and today we're going to be creating a word logo a bit like this. So the first thing we want to do is create a new document. The word I decide is going to be Gotham. And so the size that I like is 1280 by 800. Um, I mean, it's sort of up to you, but yeah, I think that works. So we're going to grab the rectangle tool and we'll just create a rectangle. We'll set the height to 50 pixels, set the fill to black, and also make sure that there's no stroke. So what we're going to do with this rectangle is then just alt drag it and we'll just bring it down 100 pixels. Um, so now what we want to do is select both of them just by clicking and dragging over both. And we'll just drag it so the top one is in the exact same place as where the second one was. So we can just delete that now. So now what we have is these three lines. Um, so the reason we have this is because most letters follow by like a three line sort of structure. So we're using this for the structure of the letters. So what we want to do first is create the G. So we'll find the center of the um, middle rectangle. We'll hold shift and alt and then we'll just drag out until it locks onto this path. So now I've got like the main sort of outline of the G. What I want to do is grab the ellipse tool again, find the center of the circle, hold shift and alt, and then just click. So now what we have is these. Are, this is the size of the circle we just created. So what we want to do is we want to minus 50 from this side of the um, diameter and minus 50 of this side from the diameter. So it's like minusing 50 of the width, another 50 of the width, 50 of the height, and another 50 of the height. So what I want to do is minus 100. So the reason we're doing that is because we want to have the 50 here. And because we're having that all around, we want to minus 100 on both of them. It'll make a bit more sense when I do this. So now we've got like the, that's the width of all of the lines. So what we want to do is go to the Pathfinder you don't have it you can go to window and make sure it's open go to minus front with both of them selected and now we have this donut shape so what I want to do is just click and drag and select all of them go to the shape builder tool and then just hold alt and delete any parts that we don't want just by clicking so now I've got this main sort of G sort of structure so I was thinking for the G is that it goes around and then it can go like that and then we'll stop a bit earlier with the curve. So we'll just drag this in a bit more just so it's closer. And what we'll do is we'll select this, go to transform, make sure that show options has been clicked, if not, and make sure line to pixel grid is unchecked. Next we'll go to stroke and we will go to the weighting of the stroke and we'll bring it up a bit, set it to the outside and we'll also set the stroke to white. We might bring that up a bit more. And what we're looking at is just this part. It doesn't matter about what's happening around anywhere else. We only really care about this part because these can be fixed. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What we want to do next is just select this object, go to Object, Path, and click Outline Stroke. So now I've got this, and it's practically the stroke is part of the object now instead of just being an extra of the object in here. So what we want to do is just click and drag again, go to Shape Builder tool, and then we'll just plus in any parts that we want back. So we'll go here, and like that. So now what we've got is this main sort of G shape. What you might notice is there's these little like white sort of lines here. So what we'll do is we'll just grab this and alt drag it over. Cool. And it's also up here, so we'll just do the same. Okay, so now we want to make the O, so again we'll go to ellipse, the ellipse tool and just hold alt just so it creates it in the center and we'll just find the size that we want it because we don't want it to be a perfect circle. Okay, so that looks pretty good and again just find the center, hit alt and then just minus 100 from both sides. Okay, so now we want to make sure that both of these are selected and just go to Pathfinder and minus front. So now I've got the G and the O, we'll just leave the O like that for now and we will start creating the other letters. 
So what I'm going to do is just grab this um, and we'll just right click transform, rotate and make sure it's rotated to 90 degrees. So now what we've got is this sort of layout. So we'll use this as the long side of the T. And what I was thinking is this actually curve looks pretty good for the bottom of the T. So we might actually leave it like that and we'll actually use this for the bottom of the T so the T goes a bit lower than that. So now we'll just click and drag this over for the H and that as well. And then we'll just shape build what we have right now. So just minus any parts you don't want. We might leave that G line just going through the whole thing. Okay. So now what we want to do is create the A. So I was thinking for the A, we might actually have the left line of the A actually in line with this. So we'll just alt drag that create a bit longer. We'll just bring it down and rotate it to what we want. Okay. And then we'll also bring up this and bring this a bit further because we might actually make this an actual point. So it actually goes to a point on the A. So we'll just shape build that right now. Just take away those and we'll just leave that point there. Okay. So now what we want to do is create the M. And so to do that we'll just alt drag maybe from here. Just make it a bit longer. And then we'll just rotate it. And I was thinking for the M, we'll actually make it start in the middle of this section. So we'll actually stop here. So I think that's a pretty good angle, we'll just alt drag this, just right click, transform, reflect and make sure it's on vertical. Okay, make sure it's at the same height as that. And then we'll just select both of these and alt drag them across, again keeping them at the same height. And that looks good. Okay. So what we'll do is select them and just take away any parts that we don't want. Okay, this looks pretty good. I decided to keep these spikes sort of here to add more variety. Okay, so what you might notice on the G is we actually have these little faint sort of black lines here. So a nice easy way to fix this is just to grab the direct selection tool and then we'll just drag out these anchor points of the um, white. So just drag this out. And so as well, I was thinking is because it's like Gotham City, so it's, it's like representing Gotham City, like um, this logo. Um, as I was thinking, it would look pretty cool if it had like a skyscraper cut out into all of the bottom of the letters. So we might actually try that. We'll just grab the rectangle tool and we'll just start creating these skyscrapers. So the main thing to remember about like creating logos is if you have an idea, just try it. Like, just try it because you're never going to know what it looks like until you try it. Even if you think, oh, nah, it probably won't look very good. It's not going to hurt you to try it. Like, yeah, it might take a bit more time, but the time that you put into it really shows off in the final product. Because I mean like creating logos is a creative thing. Um, so you need to have the ideas in your head. But having those ideas in your head isn't going to do anything if you don't actually try them. It's so like this might not come out right and I'll just delete the rectangles or just undo what I've done and that's fine. And maybe I'll just leave it like that or maybe by then I'll have a different idea and I can try that. Okay, so it actually came out pretty well. I think it looks actually... Alright, sort of reminds me of a skyscraper sort of feeling. Might just slightly change that. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously this is just one way to create a logo. Like, there's multiple different ways. Like, this is for words, um, using the three-line structure. But, like, obviously there's logos which are, like, imagery and all that other stuff. Um, so I hope you liked this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful. 
Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, my God.